Welcome along for more NBL action and many thanks for the reaction to last week's program. This week's match comes from Tasmania where the Hobart Tassie Devils play host to Canberra's Mazda Cannons who early in the season are rated as potential finalists in Western Division which looks to be the tougher of the two divisions. The Hobart team is in its first year in the NBL having been added to the league along with Frankston as the competition has expanded to one of 16 teams. The Tassie Devils had a first up win over Devonport but were well aware that the Cannons would prove to be a much tougher nut to crack. We start our coverage in the middle stages of the first half. Commentators are Roger Wills and David Beatty, and Canberra is in the white singlets and shorts. 12.48 remaining in the half. 19.16 to the Cannons. Possession of the Devils to Marty Green. Warren Devils, Stanwyck. To... Devils must move a little bit more on offence here. They're... Uh... Players away from the ball aren't moving. On that occasion, a beautiful basket from Peter Mann, but he had to do it all himself. Peter Mann, six points now for the Devils. Look at the height there from Kirschmeyer. Is it a foul? Had to be a foul, a chopping foul. And so... The Devils, um, in contrast to the, to the Cannons, are only shooting 58% from the field. The, the Cannons still maintaining their 70% their Field goal percentage, an excellent percentage. I don't think they can keep that up for the game, but it's standing them in good stead at the moment. Jamie Kennedy on for the Cannons and uh, Herb McEachin off. Still two f throws remaining. <laughs> Marty Green, the leaper. Clapping from Bailey. And so the foul against Jerry Lee and the ball with the Devils. 16 fouls to the Cannons against four to the Devils. Just over 12 minutes remaining in the first half. 19-18 in favour of the Cannons. Can Man put them in front? Yes, he has. So the Devils are back in front by one point. Lee Smythe, is it wide? Yes, it was. Now the Devils are starting to roll. Eric Bailey loses it. I think it was a foul. It's a travel foul, in fact, so it goes to the Cannons. Lee has it, gives it to Smythe. There's a steal from uh, Warren Stanwyck. Oh, brilliant play, and the Devils are starting to roar. Good play there from the young, young Warren. He uh, anticipated the pass nicely and finished it off with a beautiful little left-hand jumper. Ball with Dave Nelson, captain of the Cannons. Smythe working hard. Does he lose it? No. Regains. Bailey says, oh no. But the definite foul there was against him. And the ball will be awarded on the side to Jerry Lee. Second. Substitute. Coming on is Brennan Stanwix for brother Warren Stanwix. Three Stanwix brothers in the Tassie Devils combination. Quite unique in the NBL. Play with the Cannons, through Smythe, back to Lee, a long shot. Rebound, plenty of Devils there. Comes to Coleman, intercept, foul, great play, loses it, does Lee, so it's back with Marty Green. That was a let off for Curtis Coleman. Stending things down. Brennan Stanwix, his first touch of the ball. Eric Bailey works hard, travel. A lot of trouble with that Eric Bailey so far. To Lee. The drive in from Kennedy. Is it in? No. Oh, great rebound. Defensive one to Marty Green. Across the court it goes to Brennan Stanwix from Peter Mann. Down the court he comes. Off the boot of Phil Smythe. Stopped the flow though, so the ball is with Peter Mann. 22 plays 19 in favour of the Devils. Good defence from the Cannons, really hustling at the moment, making uh, the Devils make a few mistakes. Ten minutes, 40 remaining in the half. Possession with the Devils. They also have the lead. Peter Mann looked to be touched there by uh, Jamie Kennedy. With Brennan coming back into the side this week after a shoulder injury. Plenty of rebounding going on. Very strong under the basket was Wade Kirschmeyer. Looked to dig into the ribs of Bailey. Crowd didn't like it, but there's uh, 
No foul against Kirschmeyer. So the two Americans uh, enjoying the encounter. Rebounding once more. Very successful, the Devils. Peter Mann has it. 9.55 remaining. 22-19 in favour of the Devils. Peter Mann in possession. Eric Bailey goes long to Marty Green. Does he lose it? Recover. Good support from Peter Mann. Coleman, long shot. Yes! And also a foul into the bargain. The game turning into quite a rugged affair. No big pardons being asked or, or given at the moment. Nelson to Jamie Kennedy. Good play from Jamie Kennedy. Three points now, the margin in favour of the Devils. Curtis Coleman, former coach of the Launceston Casino City, off hands, goes to Brennan Stanwyck. Cool under pressure, and the Devils go back to a five-point margin. Nice play there from Brendan Stanwyck. He, he's very solid on that baseline, loves that little jump shot from the baseline, and uh, it reaped the result that time. Foul against the Devils, and once more, Phil Smythe will go to the free throw line. Quick Just reply one shot. Phil Smythe. One for one. So... Two points, the margin in favour of the Devils. Just under nine minutes remaining in the first half and Smythe has six points. Marty Green, individual performance now. Oh, strength under the basket by Jerry Lee. Gets it to Smythe, he seems to be everywhere. There he goes, driving in. Oh, magnificent play from the Australian captain. Last year with the St Kilda team. Now a great game for the Canberra Cannons. 8.30 remaining in the first half. 26 all the score here at the Kingba Sports Centre. Curtis Coleman, can he break it? Yes! Delightful jump shot from Curtis Coleman. Six points to Curtis Coleman. All with Dave Nelson. Smythe to Jamie Kennedy. Dave Nelson driving in, steading. Rebound, Marty Green, hasn't he done it well in the first half? Peter Mann, centre of the court. Two points to the Devils, 28-26. Peter Mann, long shot. Easy rebound to Dave Nelson. Kennedy to Smythe, the quick set up from the Cannons. Marked by Brennan Stanwix. Flicks it to Barry Ball, who's back on now for Kirschmeyer. Good goal from uh, Gary Ball as the... In fact, four points to Gary Bourne. So seven and a half minutes remaining in the first half. It's 28 all between the Devils and the Cannons. Peter Mann, marked by Jamie Kennedy. Still in possession. Quick one, two with Marty Green. Will Mann shoot himself? Yes, he will. Rebound. A very tall Gary Ball. Gets it to um, McGeechan. Now back on the court to Jamie Kennedy. Back to Lee. The height's there from McGeechan. Good play, McGeechan, from the Cannons. They go to the lead by two points with just over seven minutes remaining in the half. Nice assist there from Ball. Got the ball into McGeechan very nicely. Possession, Devils to the Brennan Stanmix. To Peter Mann. Darren Stanmix now to Marty Green. Rebound to Coleman. Off the hands. Ball will be with the Devils. Go to Captain Peter Mann. Almost a steal by uh, McGeechan. Ball to go to the Canberra Cannons. Carmen's disappointed. And Phil Smythe. He's free down that side is McGeechan. The all-time high scorer in the NBL. And that's how he's done it. So. No defence to contend with. They're very poor defensive work by the Devils. They're going to have to tighten up uh, if they want to be a f to win this game. Nine points so far to McGeechan. Possession of the Devils is Brennan Stanmix. Marty Green turns around. Rebound. Pushing foul. Jerry Lee knows it. 
and in fact he knows he's got the uh, the foul that is the free throw against the Devils and Phil Smythe gives it to Kennedy tremendous play from Kennedy but as Dave mentioned they seem to be getting easily free and four points to Kennedy so far just illustrates the point Roger the Devils aren't working anywhere near hard enough on defense Fowler Warden there's been plenty of uh, fouls in this first half the ball will go to the Canberra Cannons as Jerry Lee and that's the eighth team foul for the Devils just under six minutes remaining it's 34 28 in favor of the Cannons Phil Smythe what a class player brilliant to watch him and they lead now by eight points he's got ten points so far the Cannons maintained their ascendancy until half time in the process stretching their lead from eight points to 13. We rejoin it with 12 and a half minutes left on the clock in the second half and the Cannons 11 points in front, 66 to 55. The hustling from Smythe is to be noted throughout this game. Never leaves his opponent alone. Now he follows Brennan Stamix across, but the ball's with Curtis Coleman steadies. Never in doubt the moment it left his hands. 66 plays, 57, just over 12 minutes remaining in the game. Cannons working a set offence. The ball into Gary Ball in the middle. Herb McKeachin, brilliant player in the first half. Now with Jerry Lee. Over it goes. He's got Lucas Smythe. Gets a clear shot. Converts comfortably. And so the Cannons go back to 68-57. 11 points the margin in favour of the Cannons. 12 minutes remaining in the match. Eric Bailey. Brennan Stanmix. Rebound, doesn't need it. There's a bit of a jostle going on there between Marty Green and uh, Jerry Lee. That doesn't matter. The ball is uh, with uh, Phil Smythe at the moment. That's the Canberra coach up on his feet, Bob Turner. In it goes, so the Cannons go to 70-59. 70-59, that's 11 points. And we've got 11 and a half minutes remaining in the match. Very Curtis Carmen receives the foul, the pushing foul, and against Herb McGeechan, we have a substitute. And comes Jamie Kennedy for Gary Ball. Jamie Kennedy, a fine display in the first half. Pushes Lee over to Mark Bailey. Goes, in fact, to Curtis Carmen. Can he do it again? No. Rebound comfortably to Nelson, gives it to Smythe, sets up the play once more. Lee comes down the centre of the court. Kennedy's fairly loose on the left side, goes to him. Good play from the Devils. Peter Mann, a long shot. Rebound, Curtis Carmen. Phil Smythe is there once more. Comes from the back court into the front court, flicks it to Kennedy. This happens so often in the first half, that combination. And McGeechan to Lee. Lee loses it, regains. Marked by Bailey. Oh, fine play. Fic flicks it to McGeechan. A sharp pass. McGeechan gives him the signal and says, thank you very much, as the Cannons lead by 13 points. Fine assist there from Lee. Brennan Stanmix. The what Devils is the ruling? The Devils, are going to jump ball. the Devils are going to have to be more conscious of their shot selection. They're taking shots under pressure and not persevering with, you know, their move, working the ball around, trying to work inside, hit Marty Green, the bigger players inside. And they're, they're persevering with bad shot selection at the moment. Jump ball won by McGeechan. Over to Smythe. Down to Nelson. Nelson flicks it to Kennedy. A holding foul. And the ball will be with the Cannons. They lead by 72 to 59. And there's over just over 10 minutes remaining in the match. To Smythe, the playmaker, gives it to Kennedy, to Nelson. Rebound, should have gone to Bailey, doesn't come back to McGeech. Into the key comes Kennedy and converts. Fine combination once again from the Canberra Cannons. And they go to 72-59. Curtis Coleman, back by McGeechan. 
Marty Green struggling hard. And the holding foul will go in favour of Marty Green. There's plenty of feeling going on. That's Dave Nelson and Marty Green. Eric Bailey with the tape from the uh, over the eyebrow from a first half uh, altercation. And look at the look on the face of Dave Nelson as the ball it goes to Curtis Coleman on the side. And he's marking Marty Green. Beautiful hands, Herb McKeachin. Beautiful steal. Jerry Lee. Nelson loses it. The crowd loved the villain losing it, but he regained it and he really showed them. That's cool basketball from Dave Nelson. 76 plays, 59 in favour of the Cannons, just over nine and a half minutes remaining in the match. Ball with Curtis Coleman. Marked by McGeechan, and despite that hustling, he puts it in. Fifteen points in favour of the Cannons. Smythe. Kennedy. Ball back to Smythe. Stanwick's up off the deck. Comes to Bailey. Brennan Stanwick's. Marked by Kennedy. Foul against Jamie Kennedy. And the ball on the side to Peter Mann. 76 place. 61 in favour of the Cannons. Curtis Coleman. Eric Bailey. Foul against Jerry Lee. <laughs> They realise the importance of Eric Bailey and they've been marking him very closely so that's throughout the, eight, the night. The eighth team foul for the Cannons and very early, well, not very early, but eight minutes remaining in the second half and that's going to be a, a cause of worry to uh, Coach Turner. Eric Bailey on the line. Substitute being made with Kirschmeyer coming on for Jerry Lee. Bailey's first foul shots for the game. First one is good. One hundred percent from the line for Eric Bailey. That's the confidence boost of the Devils need at this stage. Seventy six by sixty three in favor of the cannons. And once more control with Phil Smythe. A holding foul and Phil Smythe has really played a magnificent game here tonight and he's seemed to have the game in full control right throughout. In fact, he gets applause as he's substituted and in comes Les Hurst for his first time on the court tonight. Immediately into the action. Gives it back to his captain, Dave Nelson, and a fine basket from Dave Nelson and the camera cannons... Uh, Doing it comfortably at the moment, leading by 15 points. Point number 14 to Dave Nelson. Ball to Kirschmeyer. The quick break away to Nelson. Down comes Kennedy. Thank you very much. Steadies. Is it a rebound? Yes, it is to uh, McEachin. And they really have the control. And of course, that height has been a, a great bonus. Been a very slippery customer tonight, Herb McEachin, and he's earned every one of his 20 points. Marty Green. Rebound comes to man. Not quite. Can Marty Green convert? Grabs it, puts it in. Yes. Tremendous effort from Marty Green. Trying to lift his side. They still trail by 15 points. The Cannons 80, the Devil 65. It's just over seven and a half minutes remaining in the match. Kirschmar, not quite. In points. The Cannons 80, the Devil 65. With just over seven and a half minutes remaining in the match. Kirschmar, not quite. Quickly whipped across to Coleman. Down the right he goes. McEachin picks him up very quickly. Coleman, Green, once more in there. Tremendous display from the big American. And the Devils keep the momentum going. They've got to cut off the cannons in this defence. They seem to be able to reply very quickly. There's a 
A lucky break for the Devils. The breakaway to Bailey. Can he convert? Yes, he can. There's the momentum the Devils need. They trail 80-67. Big comeback from the Devils. Coach Turner's up off the bench. He's obviously worried by the flurry of baskets that uh, the Devils have just put on. There's that man, Herb McKeachin. He'll steady them down, though. Kennedy to Kirschmeyer. And the chopping foul. Now the scoreboard is right. One said 67, and the other one said 69. But the score you saw was correct. 80-69, 11 points. Wade Kirschmeyer comes to the line. Currently shooting nil from three, Kirschmeyer. You want to improve on that. Not quite. One more shot to complete the two. Well done, Wade Kirschmeyer. So he breaks his duck from the, the line. 82-69 in favour of the Cannons. 6.35 remaining. Was with Warren Stanwix to Marty Green. Steal, desperation lunge from Marty Green. And the player falling over the top was Herb McGeechan. The quick hands of Herb McGeechan. He, he's had un untold steals tonight. Beautiful play. Knocked by Warren Stanwix to McGeechan. Kirschmeyer. And Mr. Consistent does it again. Peter Mann. 84 69 in favour of the Cannons. Six minutes, ten remaining. To Marty Green, signals to Warren Stanwix. He takes it across to man. The pressure and defence has been always there all night. Rebound, defensive one to McEachin. Across to Kennedy. To Hurst, almost a steal. In goes Hurst. Good play from Hurst. He really worked hard for that one. Gave it across to uh, Kirschmeyer, and Kirschmeyer converted. 86 69 in favour of the Cannons. And the Devils letting that momentum that they had established a couple of minutes ago slip. Although Warren Stemwick has something to say about that and uh, converts a nice little layup. 86-71 following an inspirational play from Warren Stanwix. Once more McGeechan, tremendous uh, steal from Marty Green. The breakaway comes to Brennan Stanwix a long way out. Tremendous to Stanwix brothers. They're giving the side a momentum at the moment, but the Canberra Cannons still lead by 15 points and we're just over five minutes remaining in the match. Devils playing in fits and starts. They've got to be a little bit more consistent. Jamie Kennedy. Kirschmeyer to Hurst. Tremendous play from the Cannons. They really have put on a superb team effort here tonight. Eric Bailey. Rebound to Kirschmeyer. Away come the Cannons. Les Hurst goes himself. No, across to Kirschmeyer. Up he goes. In the bear hug. And the applause against the Canberra Cannons because he was fouled. And that was Wade Kirkmeyer's fifth foul, and he leaves the game with four minutes 25 remaining in the second half, and 14 points to his credit. So Jerry Lee comes on, a chance on the court. The ball is with the Devils. Peter Mann has it. Mark Hustle by McGeechan. He's certainly done his work in defence tonight. There's a steal to Hurst. Once again, an illustration of superb defence by Herb McKeatson. Those long arms of his just reached out and knocked the ball away from Peter Mann. He's done it so often tonight. Curtis Coleman back on the court for the Devils. And the Devils trail 88-73. As Les Hurst, who's uh, put on a fine performance since he came on late in the game. First time to the line for Les Hurst. And a great start for him. Rebound to Marty Green. And in fact, as you saw, they both had a bite of the basketball. So it's a jump ball. The height of Marty Green. There's McGeechan. Steal again. 
steadier to Kennedy. Kennedy to Lee. Long shot, successful Jerry Lee. And Canberra have maintained that 18 point margin to the end. The final score 105 to 87. Final statistics reveal that Canberra outshot Hobart from the field, making 61% to the home team's 49. Hobart made an excellent 93% from the free throw line, while Canberra's record at the charity stripe was a mediocre 64%. Most valuable player was the Cannons Herb McEachin, the all-time high scorer in the NBL with 1915 points currently. In this match his field goal hit rate was 91% making 10 of 11 attempts for 20 points. After the match he spoke to Roger Wills. Herb congratulations on a magnificent performance. Do you know it was 91% from the field? No I didn't. That's a surprise to me. I, I know I started the game off pretty well shooting but uh, I didn't think I shot that well. You've been with the Cannons all the way. Do you think they can go all the way this year? I think we can. We've got more experience this year. We've got more height. We're more physical, speed, and more experience. So it's, it's a good team this year, a good blend of uh, youth and uh, veterans. So I think we'll go far. It's early days yet, but you've obviously read the recruiting, would know a lot of the players. Mm -hmm. Who would be the threats at this stage? Well, you got to pick Nunna Whiting, uh, Geelong. They recruited well. There's always West Adelaide. But in our group, I think we just got to look out for St. Kilda, Geelong, and uh, Nana White. They'll be the teams to beat for us. Okay, Herb, look forward to seeing you on ABC Sport yeah, uh, sometime later on. All right, thanks. Winning coach Bob Turner is in his first year with Canberra after four years with Newcastle Falcons. Voted NBL Coach of the Year in 1981, he signed on for three years with the Cannons. He was quick to praise Herb McEachin's efforts in this match. It was Herb's game. I think he uh, stole the ball when we needed a steal. He made a shot when we needed a made, uh, shot made. And, you know, that's just the key for us. If someone picks up the slack, then uh, at least we can get a win out of it. It's a very ragged encounter tonight. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we play a physical game because we have big players. But uh, just every once in a while, we get caught for a few ticky-tack ones. And, uh, and then it just catches up with us, and we just play bad basketball. You picked up some new players, great players, like Phil Smyre, the new coach. You seem to have the depth the Canberra Cannons this season? Yeah, I think for the first season, uh, for the first year, Canberra really has a good shot at uh, doing well. They have good depth. Uh, we, we can go all the way down to nine players with very solid players. And, uh, you know, we can, we can vary our offense and defense as much as we want to. So uh, as long as we do it when we're out on the floor, that's the key. Only the second match for the Devils in the NBL. Your impressions? I think they have a good future. They, uh, they really work hard. The, the overall organization is very, very uh, professional. And, uh, and that's the key to success here in the NBL. And looking at the tables after the second weekend of competition in Eastern Division, a break appearing between the top three and the rest, Coburg, West Adelaide and Newcastle unbeaten, Brisbane, Frankston, Sydney, Devonport and Illawarra with two or more losses against their names. In Western Division, three unbeaten teams, Geelong, Nunawading and St Kilda, then Bankstown, Canberra and Hobart with one loss, Adelaide and Perth both with two losses. Next week, a double bunger for you, a vital clash for Frankston at home to Newcastle and highlights of a match between two unbeaten teams, Canberra and West Adelaide. Hope you'll be back with us next week. I'll see you then.